Welcome to the Galway Races new six episode podcast series, Let's Be Having You Galway, relaying stories from inside and outside the parade ring. Paul Collins here. It's been my honour to chat to racing royalty and lifelong fans alike. In this week's show, stories of racing. I didn't want the game to finish me. I wanted to go out in my own terms. I wanted to go out today I wanted to go out. And even stories of romance. I said to my dad, I'd met this really nice guy called Davy Russell and my dad said, is he a jockey? And I said, no, this lad's not a jockey. No, he's not a jockey. No, he's from Cork. And that was fine. And a couple of hours... He's working in Musgraves in town, is it? Yeah. So I went away and my dad called me. The six o'clock news was on and dad had paused the, the news and he said, Edel, is this the guy? Welcome to the Let's Be Having You podcast with racing royalty in studio today. They're the Harry and Meghan of racing, or something like it. We're delighted to welcome the man who has won it all in racing, Davy Russell. Welcome, Davy. Thanks, Paul. And we're delighted to welcome your wife, Idel, also. Welcome, Idel. Thanks, Paul. A Galway woman. Yes. Only out the road. Yeah, not far. Port Omna. Yes. And while, Davy, we want to get the inside track, so to speak, on Galway and the festival and everything else, the meeting of Adele and Davy is a pure love story altogether, Davy, isn't it? It is. Um, it's just one of them um, things that probably you'd see in a movie scene. You know, beach, bathing suit, sandals. Speaking of light, walking across the... Who would play you in this scenario, by the way? Looking along the lines of Brad Pitt or... Adele's going to choke in the water there now. <laughs> She'd have to get in sick. <laughs> in sick. <laughs> so go on, paint the picture, Davy. Well, it was actually a great crack. I rode on the Monday. I think I rode a winner, actually, on the Monday. From, from, my dad owned it with uh, Paul Duff and uh, Tom Mullins trained it. Uh, so... The farmers and good, and I'd no ride on the Tuesday, so I was so I decided to go to town Monday night, and uh, I met up with uh, Derek O'Connor and a few lads, and um, there was a few of the Limerick hurlers that were after getting knocked out of the championship were there. And, God, that uh, long ago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they actually started winning. I felt sorry, but they were good, good hurdlers now. And um, one of the lads was retiring or something, so they said they'd give him a send off. And um, so we were inside in the hole in the wall. And I was staying out in. Um, out in. Clare uh, Galway. Galway. In the Clare Galway Hotel. Um, I used to stay there for the week. So I said to the lads, come on, we'll go back to the Clare Galway. You know, the boys will make us sandwiches and bag of crisps and have a few more drinks and uh, so we were walking out the bar and, uh, and I saw these two beautiful women now walking down the street and two chaps with them and uh, so I said look I'll go get the car and because uh, I wasn't drinking now there was definitely eight or nine of us to get into the Toyota Avensis uh, and um Sounds like a world record attempt. Yeah, well, we we gave it a go on, anyway. and uh, they weren't small lads either. Now, and uh, just whatever look I gave when I pulled the car up, the two boys were after getting swiping the two girls off of the the lads they were with, and uh, they were from Drum and Inch. The two boys, so they started. You couldn't take your eyes off them for a minute, them Drum and Inch. Yeah, no, no, they'd be gone in yet. So the two Drum and Inch boys went off with their hands in their pockets, and we went off with the two girls, and. Um, Lucky enough, one of them was Adele, and we went back to the hotel, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. So let's get the real story, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. I know that's it. That is it. Yeah, no, you... I, I, I went to the Gala races on the Monday. Um, it was my dad's birthday, and he's a huge fan of the Gala races, and my parents would, it was an annual thing every Monday. They'd travel in together, and I was after being away for a while. Um, Where were you? I was in America. Go away. And what was going on over there? Uh, just traveling. Yeah, just traveling. Any reason and you went to no, America? No, just wanted to get away and have a break. And I came back. If and this was prime time <laughs> now, we'd stick on this question <laughs> yeah. for the next week. Oh, I keep going. No, so give her a no. squeeze there, see what happens. No, no so I came. I put, you, I put it this way, Paul. When she came back, she was vulnerable. 
<laughs> okay, well, Adele, I think I'm going to hand this one over to you now to pick it up. Um, we went into the Galway races and uh, with my parents, and yeah, we we went out for dinner and had some drinks. And I met a friend of mine, and she was encouraging me to come downtown. Galway was alive. And uh, went downtown, had a few drinks and was walking back up. She lived next door to the hole in the wall. And when did you red card the Drum and Inch lads? Oh, God, love them. <laughs> <I>. <laughs> they were Every ju- we were time just we talking. drive through Drum and Inch. Oh, he Inch. reminds me. Yeah, he reminds me. Well, they were lovely lads. No, we were just One walking. of them wasn't Seamus Callanan, was it? No, no, no. I'd know him. She wouldn't red card him too handy, no. I'd say. To size well, him. No, we were walking back to my friend's place and we met David and the lads and they said they were going back to have a, a party in Clare Galway. And we Miles were, from the uh, from hole in the wall. We were right beside my friend's place, but yeah, we hopped in the car and went with them. And did you have to ring the mother and father then saying, hey, we're after meeting a load of lads? No, no, it's actually mad. The next day I was at home and I said to my dad, I'd met this really nice guy called Davy. Uh, Davy Russell and my dad said, is he a jockey? And I said, no, this lad's not a jockey. No, he's not a jockey. No, he, he's from Cork. And that was fine. And a couple of he's hours. He's walking in Musgraves in town, is it? Yeah. So I, I went, I went away and my dad called me. The six o'clock news was on and dad had paused the, the news and he said, Edel, is this the guy? Is your father working for the FBI? By the way? <laughs> so, so he'd paused. Dave was after winning on Rebel Fitz. And he paused and I said, oh, my God, that is the guy. That's him. So, no, he had never, he, he didn't say anything the night before. He, he didn't mention, I, they were all I'm just a regular fun. guy, just in town yeah. for a few days. For the races. I thought it was, I think it was a pilot. I don't know if it was a pilot <laughs> or an, a, a, an accountant wouldn't have, wouldn't have done at the time. You could have been a limerick hurler. I no. didn't know. I didn't know. No, I was, I think, I think I went with a pilot, I'd say. I told a person one time that I worked in a radio station and she told me... <laughs> You need to tell people you've got a more exciting <laughs> job, like a pilot. So I totally get where you're coming from, Davy. Uh, we'd pick a team at the at the start of the night before we go out, whether we'd be pilots or surgeons or, you know, and we'd run with it then for most of Davey, the Davy, you're not meant to be yeah. saying all this. This <laughs> well, is the guy code. You're yeah. breaking the guy code. Yeah. Um, but so you fell for it anyway, though. I did. We met uh, a couple of times that week and... We went out to the barn dance. Yeah, we, we, you, you were... Yeah. Dave was actually went down to Kenturk for a party yeah, for, Rebel party Fitz. for Rebel Fitz. you were yeah. a pure, absolute party yeah. animal. Oh, an animal yeah. Yeah. And he drove back from Kenturk to... We, there was a barn dance uh, outside Portumna and myself and all my family. It was a fundraiser and we went out there and uh, Davey arrived on and it was a great night. So, yeah, it just... And when did you know... You tell. Did he have All you at, walking down the street. Did he that have no? She knew. Did he have you at? I'm an airline pilot. <laughs> no, you no. Know, it was all like it was actually a couple of weeks or months. Uh, somebody had addressed us as saying, "How long are you together?" And I was like, "Oh my god, are we together?" I'm actually getting a frog in my throat. <laughs> so he said, um, "Yeah." He said, "You know, did you have some fun today?" And I said, "A great crack today, which is." So he said, "Will we do it again tomorrow?" And that was and here we are today. Here we are still having, and I mean, Paul, we went out in Galway last night, and I, I, I don't know if you remember, I laughed and I laughed and I laughed, and it was lovely. It was really like coming it back. It felt to like Galway. home. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. And you're living in Yall now. Yes. And what's it like watching your now husband on television with ambulances chasing him around when he's racing? I was okay watching him up until he had the fall in the Monster National. I never had, I always had it on in the in the kitchen. Um, the children were always watching it. But the fall in the national, that that changed. I couldn't watch him then. I could watch replays. Um, I could check the results. Once you knew he was safe. Yes, I could I could see if he's finished, regardless of position. If he'd fallen, I'd always check to see, did he ride in the next? But I couldn't watch him live. I haven't. I, we went to the Grand National with the children. And Dave is riding. How many do you have? Four. Four children, and we brought. I brought the four of them. Dave was riding, and uh, I looked to the ground for the entire race. Um, How were the kids? What are their names, by the way? Lily, Finn, Liam, and Tess. And um, yeah, I remember when Dave was retiring, they did say they were disappointed that they wouldn't which, be able to see him. Which time? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> You're ahead of me, Davy. Uh, yeah. So they. Uh, 
they would watch him. They adored. What, what the point was, sorry, when he was retiring, they were disappointed they wouldn't be able to watch him yeah. anymore. But I said, we have lots of videos, you know, and they're able to now work Google and they can go on YouTube and watch all his wins and all it's the safer stories. As well. It is safer. And Davy, I suppose life changes, doesn't it? Because you've now got a family, you have four children, and I suppose being brave and willing to take the chance at a jump or whatever. I mean, you know, you do have ambulances chasing you around. It never really bothered me much now, to be honest. Do you know, I, I've been doing it, I, I've wanted to do it since I was about eight, and I've been doing it since I was kind of 17 or 18, you know, flat out. And um, it, to be honest, it never really bothered me much, you know, ever. Um, and it was just, it was the same as going out, catching a hurl and poking a ball against the wall. This is exactly the same for me to get up on a horse and ride him around the field or jump fences or whether you're a, whatever, whether you work in a restaurant or, or whatever you do in your daily routine. That was, that's what I've done all my life. That's all I wanted to do. And that's what I really, really enjoyed doing. So um, it was very simple for me. I never thought of anything other than that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was never a chore. You know what I mean? It was never worried about ambulances or doctors or or speed. Danger. Uh, there was no danger. Would you believe danger? Danger comes in when it gets reckless, and and it's not reckless. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 very much everybody knows what they're doing, and and that's the beauty of our sport. You know, everybody we're very close in in, and everybody respects everybody else, and. You know, it's tight and it's hard and it's tough, but at the same time, there's a lot of respect there, you know, so, and that must be maintained the whole way through. And the decision to retire the first time or the second time, you decide, but does your family come into the thinking at that stage? Does trying to make the weight, does the travelling, what comes into it? Oh, well, the family comes into it in a way that, uh, you know, I'm going to be stopped, I'm going to stop earning money, you know, so I'd want to have, you know, Plan B. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I suppose my family didn't cause, wasn't the reason for me to retire. Um, I just reached an age and there was Jack, Jack was coming through and, and you know, you, you always try to leave it the very top of your, your sport, you know, rather than on the decline. So, um, and it just felt right to do it. Um, it was the right time uh, to do it. And then unfortunately Jack got injured, but it was only kind of 14 or 18 days after I'd announced I was hired. I was writing exactly the same 14 days beforehand. Um, and uh, so then I just continued on and 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 saw out the rest of the year, you know. Eventually you up the whip. But it's ironic that, you know, 2012, so much happened for you. You met the lovely Adele and Rebel Fitz, a Cork horse, wins the hurdle in Galway. So... Incredible memories for you from Galway. Oh yeah, well Galway goes back to my youth. Do you know what I mean? We used to come here on our on our summer holidays, and Dad would go off to the races. Mum would look after us, and we'd have great time. I loved it. You know, that time of the year was always very special. There was always something going to happen. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I was lucky enough that that continued on. Like there was things about Galway, like you know, the two fences in the dip. You don't. I I just I was so excited about getting the opportunity to write. Well, I was so excited about watching it first, anyway, because it was something unique that no other track had. Mm. And then when you finally get the opportunity to ride around there um, and and jump the fences and, you know, I, I never thought about tactics or, you know, what kind of track it was, this, that, or that. It was just pure excitement to getting the opportunity to do it. Do you know what I mean? And And I really enjoyed it. And then... I suppose as experience goes by, you kind of end up in the right place. Um, better horses. And better horses make it so much easier, you know. And and uh, trainers target horses at Galway. And and when you ride for a good trainer that targets a certain race, that's, that's you know, that's the real pleasing thing. And then when it comes off, you know, it's, 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 it's very satisfying and the prize money is good up there and the excitement. And I, I used to love riding in front of a big crowd. Uh, the bigger the crowd, the better it was. Mm. Uh, the more comfortable and the easier it was for me. I loved 
the crowd coming in over the railings. I loved the noise. The roar. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the real the real one that done it for me and, and God all, it was one of them places. All yeah. the better if you've been led into Iverhain. That's right, yeah. And 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 um the people would come in over the railing to you. Do you know what I mean? It's just a unique place that you with the way you walk in around the parade ring and the Galway people and the people that go to the races in Galway, they enjoy the crack, they enjoy the music, and most importantly, they love the racing. They like when you come to Galway as a jockey, you you are a part of it, and you the, the locals treat you as as you're a part of it, and they they treat you a little bit special. I know you're a proud Cork man from y'all, and no wonder you drove back down for the Rebel Fitz party because I'm sure it felt like a kind of a big local Cork win for you. Ah, yeah, definitely. Um, the Sweetenham's owned them, um, and uh, they're one of the lads is 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 on the Irish team show jumping now, and you know they're 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 a solid bunch of people down there, and I knew the crack would be good. And then for Mick Winters, then you know he's 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 a he's a lawn to himself down there, and he's got a huge following, and the horse was heavily punted, and do you know what I mean. It was all just brilliant. The crowd was good, and. All his brothers came out and his sister, his married to Adrian Maguire, like, you know, they're steeped in horse racing and uh, they'd have huge, huge following down there. Did you go down for that party? You know? No, she was at the, she was at the barn dance. I was at the barn dance. Yeah. Okay. And when you met Dan Udell, did you follow Davy's results or did you keep an eye on the farm or were you watching where he was going? Or if you were planning a night at the movies, you're kind of thinking... Oh no, he's in Haydock Park now tonight. We can't do that. I know. I'd actually. Go, I used to go with them more so than you know. Since we had children, I would go to the races often. Um, what age are your kids now? Um, Lily is eight. She's and then we have Finn is seven. Liam is five, and Tess is three. So there's a bit of minding. There is. Yeah, they're busy. They're busy. But actually, David won the Galway Plate on a horse called Balco to Flow for Henry, and that morning. We'd found out that I was pregnant with Liam. Oh, Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to attend, uh, my GP was actually here in Galway and that was confirmed that morning. So people didn't know, but like when he won the Galway plate, like it was just one of the best days for us. Um, but yeah. It was actually a big difference. It was the first time I, ro- I started getting back riding for Jiggenstown as well. Um, and... Um, I'd say the right year that year. I'd say I, 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 Bell could have flow went on to win it to Cheltenham Festival the same year and I think it might have been champion jockey in Cheltenham or one of them years and yeah. I don't know but great year. I might have been champion jockey in Ireland I'd say the same year was I. 2017, 2018 I think you're right. Yeah. Maybe yeah so yeah. do you know it was all all good and Liam is Jesus a guest man. Oh God. If you're looking for him, you have to look up because anyway, he's a devil to climb a tree. I've never seen anything like him to climb a tree. He's a monkey, you know. He's mm-hmm. taking after the father. So. Oh, he's a gas man. Yeah, he's wild as a mare chair. That's crazy. And did you convey the news that morning? Adele? No, no, I was only a couple of weeks, so right. I didn't say anything. But we were ecstatic. Like wow. that was. But I'm just saying, like we met at Galway. You know, there was just. Galway was special. Before we had the children, I used to come to Galway every single year. And we brought the children to Galway, especially on the Sundays. Um, and we'd stay out at home in Portumna and commute then in. And the children would have free reign out in Portumna um, in their grandparents' house and then come into the races. Um, but no, especially my parents would come, as I said, Mondays and, you know, maybe another day during the week. Um, but it was lovely. It was just great memories. How is it now? I mean... You know, take us back to when you were coming in as a local and compared to now. I mean, you have kids now, so you're probably watching for the ice cream machines and the yeah. hurdy-gurdies and things like that. And they make a difference. They do. You know, I was saying it to, we went, where did we go recently? And they... Punchstown maybe, was oh it? Oh my goodness. They had like so much to do there for the children. So before that, I would have been at the parade ring, you know, like you what, had to be in the bear. I, w- I was just going to say it. But champagne tent. You got there, champagne tent, yeah. Um, yeah. And what about the gooners and everything else? Is there a lot of thought put into that or is it just um, look into the wardrobe and whatever is there? 
Yeah, I suppose it, it changes. You have to be practical. The, the heels might have to stay at home if the four children are coming. But no, the children love it. And to be fair, you know, they our children are real outdoor children. They're up in the mornings and they ride their ponies and they're busy in the yard with David. They just want to be part of, you know, whatever he's doing in the yard, feeding horses, mucking out, taking horses off. We're, we're lucky enough to be afford a lot of mares this year now. and You have we'll, your own yard now, Davy. Yeah, yeah, we're breeding and breeding horses and selling horses and you know prepping horses and things like that but um, usually mares for some reason are always falling at kind of four three o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning but for this some reason this year a lot of the mares fold in around seven o'clock in the evening eight o'clock in the evening and the kids and there was one fold early in the morning uh, at kind of seven or eight in the morning the kids were up and they got to see the mares literally falling and uh, they were part of the whole thing and the excitement of it do you know what I mean and you know, as much as you can teach someone something, you know, and put it down in paper over on screens and show them things, you can't be it being there and practical. And when things go wrong and when things go right, the different results and, you know, hopefully it'll become second nature to them by the time they'll have to go and do something themselves. Well, they're, you're passing on your love of the horse. Yeah. And, and, and the experience of it. And it's an experience you can't, uh, you can't replicate, you know, Outside of the real life oh, so experience. It, yeah, it's yeah. a real life experience mm. and you have to be there. And there's the one, there's certain rules with horses that I was telling, that I told them from a very young age that there are different parts of a horse you can stand and they can't hurt you. And I, because it's all about angles with a horse. So if a horse is moving, if a horse's head is turned in towards you, its backside has to go away from you. If it's going to try and kick you, it's just mathematics. They can't do it. So once you keep a horse's head turned a smidgen in towards you, if they go to lift a hind leg, they're going to go away from you, not into you. But if you have a horse's head straight or moving away from you, it's very easy for them to swing in and, get, get, you. and get you. Yeah. So it's all about angles. And if you stand at a certain, there's a certain part of a horse you don't go behind if you're because they can't they can't get you do you know what I mean and they wouldn't get you out of malice it's just you know eventually over nature. time it's in their nature yeah. and when you and that's the top tip Davey apart from what's going to win at Galway 2023 <laughs> for lads listening who wouldn't be as experienced in horses as yourself that's an unreal tip altogether but come here Davey talk to me about getting around Galway like you've got around the world's best jump tracks what is the Davey way of getting around so do you Take it easy. Do you know when to press the button? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, look, it's all about feeling different types of horses. And but I suppose the one thing you know, you have to be on the bridle in Galway, wherever that is, it true in your position in the race. But if you're not on the bridle, if you're coming off the bridle early, if you're coming off the bridle, you know, letting uh, the horse run free. But uh, when no, you say on the bridle, you mean holding the. Reins tight. Yeah, but it, it we'll say that the horse is running within within themselves, okay. within their comfort zone. Yeah. But if you're out of your comfort zone early, early in in Galway, you've you're going to you need to come back out of the rock, if you know what I mean, and then take your chances to where you're going to get uh the the route up because and then, you know, in an ideal world you'd want your booting over the inside railing for me. Um, but then there's a lot of hard luck stories and things like that. But at the end of the day, you'd want to be up handy, away from trouble. Um, but that's easier said than done if you're of a horse. If you jump out handy in a race and you don't travel there, then that's an awful place to be. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Those fellas are going to be winging by you like motorbikes. And you just, for me, it was always have your horse in within his comfort zone, wherever that was. And as you well know, the ground can change so fast in Galway. You know, a shower of rain, you could get heavy ground and it's very hard to make up ground around Galway. But I find on good or better ground, if they go a gallop, it, it, it the race can be run fairly. But if they don't go quick in front, there's only one place to be and that's in the first three or four. But if they're going a good gallop, you can ride a normal race. You can come from anywhere. Um, they can get racing a bit early around Galway because it's downhill uh, for a lot of the way, for a, lot, a long part of the race. And then you've that severe climb up. So if they get racing, if they start moving up the pace too early 
around and you get involved in that, you're not going to get home. Mm. So you have to make them decisions. You have to and balance it. And like, I mean, in a typical week, being a top jockey, you're going to have scores of, of opportunities to ride and whatever is in your book that week. You're probably not going to know the horse from previous races, or maybe you are. So therefore, when you arrive into the parade ring, you turn on the new silks, you walk out, you meet the owner and the trainers and everything else. Like, what instructions can they give you? Are the instructions important? Uh, it's very brief. Um, you know, they can um, they could ruin they could ruin it for you, or they can make it for you. Um, some people are just brilliant at reading races. Like Arthur Moore could give you a plan A, B, and C, and every one of them would be right. And then some fellas could could just say the wrong thing at the wrong time and would upset the whole equilibrium of, of they wouldn't they just wouldn't know what would be going on they'd be guessing um, name and shame no well I'm joking yeah I'm joking. but it's it's like the some fellas just have it in their head that oh you need to be handy you need to be handy and without looking at the form or looking at where the pace is coming in the race or or who's going to make it or who's going to but grand you need to be handy if they're going to go slow. But if you're about handy and they're going help their sculptor, you're not going to last. Do you know what I mean? So instructions, it's a brief period of time that you have. And you get, have to make the calls yourself anyway. When sure you're that's in it, the, really. In it doesn't matter. Yeah. No matter what instructions you get, you have to, it's all go and feel. No, it's all feel from what the feel the horse has given you from when you leave the parade ring to when you cross the finish line. Adele, did you ever get into show jumping or did you ever have any kind of horse connection before you met this lad? <laughs> No, just my dad was a bookie, um, but he actually, he sold the business um, before I met David, which is just before, months before. My sisters rode ponies and I was an athlete. So I suppose when I met David, you know, he was a professional athlete. So I suppose I knew like he was important, you know, when he had a plan and um, his diet was important, you know, his commitment, you know. I could understand it from that, that I was an athlete before, but I was pole vaulting, so it was slightly different. Pole vaulting? Yes. Is there a big pole vaulting community in Galway there and Portumna? There, were, there was, actually. I was part of a really good club called Bursa Cain. Um, it's just over the bridge in Portumna. On the right uh, side of the bridge yes. in Portumna. Well, my dad was from Bursa Cain originally. So, um, yeah, I was pole vaulting and then uh, actually gave it up just before I met Dave. Um, she didn't. You actually went actually, back and done yeah. it. She, once. Once I did, yeah. She had Lily and Finn on the side of the, on the grass. I'll never forget it. On the grass and she was out pole vaulting in a competition. Yeah. They, Where was that? That was actually for Galway. It was uh, the Mazda League down in Cork and Finn was only a couple of weeks old and I remember pushing the double buggy across the Mardyk in Cork and carrying the poles on my shoulder. Wow. I'd say it was a picture. And yeah, they asked you me. They, the flats on that day. Yeah, <laughs> and they asked me. They said, "Will you just take one jump, clear, clear bar? We'll get the points. We'll win the league." And then, of course, when I jumped once, then I was like, "Ah, oh, go higher, go higher." I just the drogan. Did you get the points? I did. Yeah, and you qualified? We, 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 yeah, oh we did. God. Yeah. So that was that was that that was I'd say the last time. But yeah, I was pole vaulting. But I had I was living in Renmore, and when I was going out with David and. One morning, um, he went out the garden and I heard this tapping on my bedroom window and I opened the window and Dave was down the bottom of the garden carrying the poles upright on his on his like ready to go. And he said, um, open up the window, I'm coming in. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet kind of style, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I did close the window because he would, he would do it. He would. And I said he would actually go straight in the window. So and. God, that'd be an awful story to say why he wasn't racing the next day. Hilarious. What was your one's name to drop down her hair? Rapunzel. Rapunzel, yeah. yeah. It was kind of that kind of... Wow, very romantic <laughs> fella yeah. you have here, Dan. Yeah. But going back to family life and Davy trying to mind himself and make the weight and everything else, like practically then, how does that feed into going down to the shop and doing the weekly shop and everything else? Like we'd, we'd all eat the same. You know, Dave was, is very disciplined, um, you know, and would eat very healthy. Um, no Swiss rolls and things no, like that? No, no, he would. He, does, he loves jellies and sweets. But um, in the mornings now, we'd have eggs. But 
we'd all the six of us would have hard boiled eggs there'd be no choice I, we don't do menus um and then in the evening we'd all have a proper f- like meal um so no hard to bake the baking cabbage to yeah be yeah we'd we'd keep it simple but David, yeah, he had a sweet tooth, but maybe more so on the way to race, he he would sweat in the mornings or if he'd warn me on the Wednesday or Thursday, look, I'm doing 10-10 or 10. And would he be cranky then if he was trying to make the weight? I would allow for it because he'd sort of stay out of everybody's way. <laughs> Everyone had known. Once I'm left alone, you see, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But if you told me that, that microphone was black, I'd say, mm, ah, <laughs> there's a bit of gold in it there, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'd find a row with someone over something, do you know, I was terrible. But he'd, he'd apologise on the Wednesday before yeah. the Saturday just it's to tell me what was forced. coming. <laughs> it's just collateral damage of Davy's yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. I know, like, and then, you know, trying to make weight and, and then trying to, you know, I know when he's racing, he's trying to think straight and, you know, the slightest, you know, mistake or, you know, if he made the wrong choice, you know, the implications can be um Or if you don't so make much. the weight, you're not in the race. Yeah. And and I, we'd always be, and we, we actually never had a, a weighing scales in our home. Ever. And I think I bought one once and you told me to get rid of it. Yeah. So we don't, we never had one. And you'd, you'd always sort of guess, so you'd have an idea how your weight was yourself. And somebody asked me recently, what's David's natural weight? I don't know. Find what out, is it, David? Find out in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another couple of weeks. You'll be chomping the Harry was there up and down the motorway. Yeah. And you never got into even still you're not into show jumping or jumping up on a horse or with the kids now? We do. We go every weekend now. It's actually lovely. And that's the highlight of, of David's retirement. Trekking. Yeah, we're, we're, we we got a, a horse lorry and we bring the ponies away and the children every weekend. Um, we we actually, uh, today now we've to enter the ponies for the weekend. We have two that are riding ponies and doing really well. Um, and then we have two that come along and watch the two younger ones. Um, but it's, you know what, Paul, it's, I make the picnic and uh, we bring the picnic, we bring the children and it's the simple things. We go and, and they, David, you know, helps the children with their course. And, you know, Lily won a competition last weekend and, oh, we're so proud of her. You mm. know, she's only eight and wow. she's 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 a natural. Like she's Brilliant. she's beautiful to watch. Yeah. And, you know, we couldn't do this if, if David wasn't retired. Mm. So I suppose stages, everything comes, you know, naturally now. And, and it's it's a great part of of our world now with the children and and you're still involved Davy, with horses and that must be something that keeps you i suppose excited about life as well as your family and friends and all you've achieved oh yeah definitely um look uh, all my friends are in the industry do you know I, I, I have very little friends outside of it you know so um and yeah, I just I just love being around him. It's all I know, and it's all I'll ever know, really. And you managed to get a Galway woman down yeah. to y'all. Adele, I don't know have we enough time to discuss the implications, how he did it or whatever. But Davy, I want to know off you first. How did you manage that? It was tough going. No, I can tell you that she wasn't that inclined to come down. But uh, no, we built a beautiful house, and we have a lovely family now, and we live. I'm a mile from the sea, and. Um, you know, it's it's, it's I, I I I just love living in y'all. Would you believe? And is Perky's fun fair still on the go? Tis, 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 tis we went on a date strong. there. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a good spot. Hold yeah. on, give me that again. <laughs> Where did you go? We on did. The I we went down. To, I think it might have been raining or something, and the beach was wasn't an option. So we went to Perks, and you know, like. Oh sure, I was so impressed. He was he was just we every like the arcades, you'd know them. Like he knew he you know, when you were a child, this is where you grew up. So yeah. I was go, go, going around and the music and the lights and he we were just, This sounds like a Kylie Minogue. It, video. I, I no no, it actually <laughs> was a it was a good date. It was really good. Uh, a bit of fun and you can always yeah. you're never stuck sitting looking at each other, yeah. wondering, thinking of something to say, you just move on to the next game and a game of pool or um, there's a there's a great horse racing game there that you throw the ball up, do you know, and you land in the pocket and the ball comes back down and you keep throwing the ball up, you have to win the race. So. Do they have those horses in the merry-go-round? In yes, yes, And did do. Davy Russell, champion jockey, get up on a merry-go-round horse in Perks? I think there's, I think Tiger Roll is actually one of them because the, the Tyvees that they I, they I I spend a bit of time with their, with them because they um they do a bit of show jumping as well there's some lovely girls uh, uh, show jumping so um yeah they're, they're they're mad for Tiger Roll and that is a photo 
I would love to see. We have the man one. who we rode have one. the we man who one. rode Tiger Roll to victory is on the horse called Tiger Roll in the Parks Fun for America Roll. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. We have we do. We'll have get it one. done. We'll get it. Someone's someone's yeah. gonna get that done. Tiger Roll, what a horse, Davy. I was bought and seen you win that big race. Yeah, he was something special now. He was very special to me and for a number of different reasons, do you know what I mean? He was he won a triumph hurdle and and um, and was just good all the way through his life, but then to f- cap it all with two grand nationals, you know, he was just very, very special. Yeah, you and you were saying to me that he wasn't a massive horse, but I was trying to get my head around the size of those jumps around the entry, the size of Tiger Roll, and you on his back. That's breaking the laws of physics, I would say. Yeah, he's literally some of the fences. He's jumping his own height. Do you know what I mean? At kind of, you know, 30 odd miles an hour or 40 odd kilometers an hour. And he's just so, he's so clever and and nimble with his feet. and But he doesn't give you a great feeling like he's jumping him. But he jumps him his own way and he gets to the other side and he was scamper away at the back of him. He was wicked fast. So he was shocking quick through the air. He was like a, a cat through the air. Um, like a tiger, so to speak. Yeah, say. exactly. And, and um, yeah, he just he just loved, again, the bigger the day, the better he was. Mm. You know, a wet, sloppy old day around Navin wouldn't excite him too much now. Or many, to be fair to the people of yeah, Navin, but yeah. you're in entry, the world's greatest steeplechase. Yeah, he, he was come alive. A lot of hearts would melt under them, under them um, circumstances, but he was growing an inch. He was growing inch around there. You he go around with his chest out. Do you know what I mean? Is he that was, the pinnacle, Davy? Is it to to win a Grand National? I spoke to Rachel Blackmore a while ago, and we talked through her Grand National win—an incredible achievement for any jockey. But for you, where does that sit? I will sure. It's kind of it's hard to to keep going on about it and say that it's a dream, but it it is the race. Why a lot of people are attracted to our sport. It's just so unique. And then it has the biggest number of horses running in it as an op- as your opposition. And then the fences are such a challenge. Um, and so to, many variables. Yeah. And to complete a Grand National is as good as riding a winner anywhere else. Mm. But to win it is just, it's quite remarkable, the feeling you get when you win a Grand National. And... I dreamt about it and I've watched movies about it and I've grown up building the fences at home, but never in my life did I ever think I'd reach the top of the mountain. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I, I I feel that you can be champion jockey and you can win the Gold Cups and you can win everything, but the real icing on the cake is is to win a Grand National. And I suppose... The one person that has done it all was AP. Uh, he done everything. And like 20 odd times champion jockey, won every race there was to win. Two miles, three miles, everything. But he hadn't won a Grand National. And when he did, the emotion and what it meant to him really, you know, showed us all how big an event it is or how big a race. It's global. It is global. And uh, it's something that we need to um, to mind and keep because you can't replicate it. Is the secret, in the words of the Bee Gees, staying alive? Staying alive, yeah, it's survival, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of getting a horse with enough of a brain to do the work for you because you can't really help them out too much. Mm. They have to have their own brain to, to figure it out. And, and that's it. Once a horse has a good brain to figure it out, then that uh, will take you a long way in the race and an ability after that. If I have a tenor on Tiger Roll, it uh, I am going ballistic three <laughs> fences out. If he gets round Beechers the first time, I'm going, hey, he might have a chance. <laughs> and if he's heading to the winning line, I'm going absolutely out of my head. What is it? it what is Adele doing? Actually, the first time we had a photo finish, didn't we? Yeah. Um. So the, that for first time, Lily had sprained her ankle and I brought her to the hospital. And I knew I was leaving the hospital 
close to the Grand National start. So, and again, I'm this not... This is the reality of life, David. Yeah. Yeah. Waving to the crowds, <laughs> putting on the silks. <laughs> but I, again, not from Cork. I was like driving out of Cork, going to you all, going, where am I going to stop? I couldn't contact you. And I, and I just said, okay... I went into the Elm Tree in Glanton. Oh yeah, lovely re- restaurant really there nice. on the way out. Yeah. And I went in there and I asked them, could they turn on the Grand National? And when they turned it on, they were just circling the start. I stood between two stools. Lily was at my foot. And well, how was her ankle I, at this stage? Liam, it's fine. She's she sprained it, but she's she's fine. And then Liam was a week old. Probably a week old. A couple of weeks, yeah. No, he uh, maybe two well, weeks. After, two he weeks. was born after Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah. two weeks. So uh, watch the Grand National and... The, you born? Uh, no, I actually watched it, but I was there was, a, there was a big crowd around me then and they had all backed different horses. So they're shouting on all their horses and I'm standing there going, come on, Dave. Come, come on, my Davey, husband. Come on, come on my, my husband. And then as he's coming to the finish... The emotion, like I know what it means for him, but like for us, like for everybody, that's. Uh, and was you everyone know, in the room then saying, "What the hell is you want?" Yeah, yeah, she, she must have, must some have money. money. <laughs> she must have some few pound on this horse. Yeah. Um. Oh, I was. I. I. You rang me from the way room. Um. Literally. After. Yeah, and like maybe ten minutes after, so I knew I was. You know, probably the first phone call, and mm. you were like, "Wow." It was just like this weight had been lifted off, um, you know, because you were coming near the end of, you were 40, I'd say, and yeah. you were coming near the end and for, you know, you never know if it's going to happen. Like Davy had rode in a lot of Grand Nationals and had finished and had come second and, you know, but this was just, and the children at the time, Paul, now were young, like they understand say, more now. I was going to say, were Lily and Finn saying, Mammy, come on, can we yeah. just stop watching the race and <laughs> yeah. then go home? <laughs> No, and and now like they watch replays, they watch, they just it's it it could be mm. on loop in our kitchen at the moment, and they'd stay watching it. And you must have been beside yourself, willing. I mean, I've spoken to a few racing people in recent years and everything else, and say Emer Blackmore, Rachel's yes. mother would say she can't watch the racing. All she wants to hear is, you know. Rachel's safe or whatever in, in certain races and I'm sure you're the same. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I, I struggle to watch the children riding ponies that nothing would happen to them because I, I feel that Dave, he's old enough, he's experienced enough, but you still have that doubt that, you know, when my mother was alive, she used to watch the racing and she, when I was, I was teaching and she'd text me, he's had a fall, he's up, he's okay, or he's had a winner or he's, you know, she'd, she, my mother would give me the updates and she would have struggled to watch David at the time. So, you know, and even at the national, you know, when, when the Munster National, when David fell, like Dave would always say, Dale, if I fall, I will get up, regardless of the injury, break an arm, break a leg. This is gladiator s- stuff. This is, but then, Paul, I knew he was okay. And I was like, regardless of what he's broken, he's walking around. When he fell at that Munster National, I unfortunately, the children are around me. I, I completely forgot they were there. The fact I knew it was bad. They went around the first, and he was on the favourite list, and he, he fell at the first. And they went around the first lap, and then I saw the order of Malta attending to him. The second lap, I saw the blue screen go around. I knew it was serious, and it was COVID. So I didn't know who to contact. I contacted everyone I normally contact, and nobody was there. And 20 minutes after his fall, I got a phone call, and it was Rachel Blackmore. She said, I'm after walking down to the track. He's OK. What did you sustain in that incident, Debbie? Oh, I broke my neck and um, I broke my neck and a few other vertebrae. Oh, I, I, it was nasty now. And Were you in huge pain? No, I thought I dislocated my shoulder. Um, there was like a firework, a firework went off on my thumb. But as the as the time went on, it was getting more. It was getting worse and worse and worse. And I'll never forget there was a doctor. He wasn't working on the day. He was a local guy. Oh, geez, his name escapes me at the moment. But he, I knew I was in bother now at this stage. That, But I could move my toes and my fingers. But I'd broken, dislocated and smashed vertebrae up high. Uh, T2 and 3, 1 or 2, right up in my neck. And, and dislocated, um, dislocated um, vertebrae and things. And it just a doctor that walked in that I recognised. And the difference it made to me was unreal. Um, you know, just a, a familiar face, mm. you know, and there was just something, small little things like that. And um, I can remember going up, they were going to fly me to Dublin and there was something with a helicopter. So the boys had to drive me up in the middle of the night wow. 
um up and i remember when we were going into the uh into the where was it where did they go? emergency room where did they go in dublin matt private the matter the matter and uh they couldn't get in <laughs> the doors were locked we had a bit of crack i was having a bit of crack with two boys but uh at that stage i kind of knew look i was going to be okay and then the beauty of it all was the surgeon that was looking after me said he was happy that everything was going to be okay do you know what I mean? Yeah, and Mr. Butler, he was yeah, excellent. Yeah, he was fantastic. And now. it was Dr. Kira in Limerick at that day. Like, it's just, you know, most of the time jockeys will get up and walk away. And, you know, they will say they're fine and horse is fine, horse is up, horse is okay. But that, that we knew that wasn't, that wasn't. Yeah, it always simple. Been it wasn't simple. But David would ring you an hour later. It's all grand. It's grand. It may not be really grand, mm. but I suppose just, if, and he, in fairness, he was, he'd do it with his mom. And he'd do it with me um, cause, and, and his dad, you know, his dad would always contact us. And what's the way back after that, David? Did you have rehab? Were you oh, that was resting tough now. or? That was tough going. I was actually the fittest I was ever uh, when I returned from that injury. I'd done everything, weights, you know, physical work, hard work. I had an outstanding physio in um, Sean. Sean Deegan in uh, in uh, Clamell. He went above and beyond. Um, like the 99% of the people were saying he's not coming back. I was finished. Um, but um, I was never finished. I always wanted to. I didn't want the game to finish me. I wanted to go out in my own terms. I wanted to go out the day I wanted to go out. And um, no, I was lucky enough to do it twice. <laughs> um, so um, I just wanted to get back and it wasn't happening for a long time now. And I tried and I tried and I tried. I never gave up, but I always kept trying. I had to keep pushing the date out further away. And is it that you felt a tweak or is it that you felt... No, I couldn't um, rotate my neck back up to see the whole view in front of me. All I could all I could see when I was schooling was the horse's tails in front of me and that wasn't enough. I needed to see the whole view, uh, like a widescreen television. Um, like put it, you're used to a big massive television screen at home, narrowing down to a, your phone, do you know? Um, that's all I could see because I couldn't get my neck back, uh, the, 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 the rotation back to see everything. And the helmet was hurting me. When I had a helmet on, that I was getting headaches and different things. Well, and um, I mean, the resilience and belief you would need to get through that. Guys. Yeah, but the beauty of it all was the surgeon said, he says, uh, he said, uh, your neck is probably stronger now than it was before you got to fall. Well, you were always known as a fellow with some neck anyway. Yeah, <laughs> neck like a jockey's, you know what. Um, neck like Davy Russell. Um, so, um, yeah, when, and there was, the, he, he, he had to rip, diffused two vertebrae together and there was a a, a, a new vertebrae put in um, t- took out one and put in a new vertebrae and I'd say it was just a matter of getting the movement the, getting the whole thing back moving and that At that stage that, that's kind of getting into your head I presume around the kitchen table is it that look What's the story here? No, it was never, I no. never spoke about it, you see. It was always, there was only one goal and that was it until that goal was gone. Mm-hmm. And that goal was never gone because, you know, and then just one morning I was above in gardens and we schooled maybe half a dozen horses and it just clicked like that. I said, come here, I'll ride there at the weekend. And literally it was a Friday morning and I rode Saturday or Sunday and that was it then after that. Nobody opened their mouth. Actually, a friend of mine went in, he said, uh, he said he went in to watch the, race to see if my bottle was gone or if anything was different and he's we went down and jumped two hurdles he says come on we'll go back out he says it's the same fella who was riding a, a year ago do you know what I mean so that was funny and uh, I just enjoyed it I just look you'll be giving yourself a pat in the back because in our game unfortunately no one else is going to give it to you do you know so you have to congratulate yourself at some stage you know and that was a huge pat in the back from me to me do you know that I'd mm. overcome that? Wow. And I don't care what anyone thinks. Do you know, you have to, you have to like yourself anyway, or, or or convince yourself that you're doing the right thing because 
and and again Adele and the lads and after that then really it doesn't matter yeah. you're always going to have people telling you you should have rode this way or that way that's or right gone earlier held later or yeah. whatever but you have to in your own mind get into your shoes in the morning and know that what you're doing is the best thing that you can possibly do for the whole situation and once you do that then you can't there's not much more you can do about it and some people will be happy and some people won't do you know so that's just life Good advice for life. Yeah. Adele, oh. it's been lovely meeting you and your husband here today. Uh, is he going to get you back? Are you going to get him back up to we're, Portumna? We're, we're, we're going to come to the races this summer. Um, we actually went out for dinner in Galway last night. I was saying that and we went to a couple of places, uh, haunts like Connell's and it was re- I really enjoyed it. I actually, we haven't got out like that and laughed and, and came back to it where we great. met. The, the fellas sitting alongside us was turn, were, were talking to each other thinking that your third, if you if you kissed your third cousin, <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that too close or is it far enough away? And I was saying to myself, where else would you get it? Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like The boys were having some conversation and one fella said, no, you're sixth cousin. And the other fella says, maybe your third cousin. And I was saying, Jesus, lads, in all fairness, like you have much to be talking about. This sounds like but, a typical race week conversation. Oh, though. It, it, made us la- it made us laugh. And you know what? Like we were walking through Air Square last night and yeah, we're, we're ready to come back. We're coming back this summer, um, probably with the children. Yeah. You'll have a different Galway this year, Davy. I will. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll enjoy it all the same. Yeah. I love bringing the kids. I It's just, I... Lily and Finn and Liam, like they're so bright and they, they're as good a crack on it. It is different when innocent and I love the crack. Like I love the sport we can have. And with they them. love the sport. Yeah. Yeah. And just the fun and, and enjoyment. And the one rule in our place is there's only one rule and that's you must leave the arena with a smile on your face. I said, when they stop smiling, I said, Forget about it. We're not doing it anymore because if you're not enjoying it, there's no point in doing it. You have to leave the arena with a smile on your face. Mm, good advice for yeah. life, guys. Yeah. And thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, thanks Paul. Paul. And lovely meeting you. You too. And uh, we'll see you at Galway. Yes. Looking forward to it. Create your own story this year at Ballybrit. The 2023 Galway races commence on July 31st and run to August 6th. Seven unmissable days. To secure your ticket, go to galwayraces.com. You don't want to miss it. See you there.